So I do want to talk about near-term uh, quantum computing opportunities in life sciences, uh, but I um, do believe that the, the lessons learned here can be uh, applicable uh, across industries. Um, a little bit uh, briefly about Zapata. Uh, we spun out of Harvard in 2017 uh, to bring quantum science to business analytics. And our goal really is to help businesses solve their greatest optimization, machine learning, and simulation, simulation problems with quantum computers uh, using various software and algorithms. Uh, our product is Orchestra, and that is the platform upon which we deliver uh, custom apps and algorithms. Uh, and that uh, allows you to create your own algorithms and, and applications uh, for your use cases. We are working with uh, Fortune 500 companies who are using Orchestra to um, solve optimization problems with quantum techniques and quantum uh, classical hybrid techniques. Uh, one is a top five energy company, another top five chemical company, a food and beverage company uh, that I'll briefly talk a, a bit about as a proxy. Uh, um, who are um, concerned with optimization in delivery to 700,000 uh, plus locations in their um, distribution chain. Um, and a time top 50 bank using uh, quantum computers for risk optimization for derivative pricing. Um, those are just a few examples. So really our mission here um, is to deliver first mover quantum advantage for the enterprise. So um, this is about what can we do now uh, what, how can we start now to take advantage of the future things? This isn't about the moonshots, uh, although we do believe there will be moonshots and, 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 and things that can save humanity in the future using some quantum computing techniques. Uh, but this is really about you know, brass tacks. How do, how do we take advantage of some of the emerging uh, computational techniques now? Um, first, we want to explore our scientific advantage, leverage some insights that we have on the current hardware and algorithm uh, levels that we have accessible to us today, uh, link uh, domain expertise in the areas to these quantum capabilities, and really recognize the value of classical uh, computing solutions in the, in the overall solution architecture, which I'll, I'll get into as well. Um, we want to look at something that's actually technically feasible. Um, how do we integrate the current analytic software that we have in our infrastructure that we have today and accommodate uh, data and compute loca uh, locality uh, issues that we have? Not all of our data is residing in the same cloud. Some of it may be on-prem, some of it may be in a hybrid cloud type of a situation or several different clouds. Um, and, and we need to take that into consideration. And we need to design for enterprise security. Now, we can't design a toy problem, think that we're going to then just turn it on uh, and, and, and have to deal with uh, compliance and security and, and, and model explainability later. We really have to start planning for those things now. And we have to uh, look for things that have this concentricity with actual business impact, uh, things that are going to have real measurable financial impact on the near term, um, and that will outperform current applications and algorithms, not just do the same or prove that we can do the same thing on a quantum computer. And we would hope that we have a nearer term time horizon on these applications for it to actually have impact. So what are the things we can do now uh, as an enterprise uh, in life sciences and in other areas? Um, we shouldn't really wait for the hardware race to play out uh, to build our software and infrastructure because um, it, it, it really won't work that you think about um, waiting until that beautiful, shiny, fault-tolerant computer shows up in your infrastructure and then you start to think about uh, how you're going to use it. Because as uh, some of the previous spe speakers have uh, described, you know, the, the way that you do computing is completely different here. So we have to adjust to a new problem formulation just as we did when GPUs arrived. You know, at, at the time we had to change everything into shaders. Now it's 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 kernels and streams. But you have to reformulate your problem, and that takes time. So to think that you're going to have the infrastructure and the workforce to be able to do that uh, when it shows up, you're probably thinking a bit naively about how the real world works there. Now. Uh, choosing a problem with near-term business impact, particularly in life sciences, there's a huge interest in the future of simulation and modeling, getting that perfect fit chemically and the perfect electron structure for, for doing drug binding and that kind of a thing. That's exciting. That's something that uh, presently has uh, serious limitations in the classical world because it's a quantum thing that we're looking at there. Um, so it's something that in the future, 
uh, will be an exciting area for, for developments in, in quantum computing. The problem is, and as we've published with, with some of our partners out there, uh, that's going to take more qubits and greater fidelity than we have today and that we'll have for several years. It's great to start doing research in the area, but it is research and it's not even in the R&D world, it's, not, it's more R than it is D. So really um, at Zapata, uh, we're focusing on uh, things that can be uh, take advantage of nearer term quantum hardware, such as optimization and machine learning. And this is even a bit of a, a false dichotomy because as we'll see, you know, you can use machine learning to do optimization and optimization uh, techniques can be used in machine learning. So uh, there's a bit of a false dichotomy there, but, but, but in terms of categorization, I think it's a useful rubric to, to look at optimization problems that you're already doing now and machine learning problems that you're already doing now uh, with your classical neural networks and whatnot. Look at these things and, and look for quantum advantage there. And when we do that, um, there are some use cases that we believe, particularly in life sciences, that will have a nearer term impact, particularly financially, uh, than, than even the, the, the drug discovery end of things. Um, you know, drug discovery may be a, a, a several tens of millions of dollar problem, but the clinical development and marketing problem uh, and distribution problem of, of getting drugs to market is, is a multi-billion dollar problem. So in the scheme of you know, business impact, uh, fortunately, uh, this area will actually move the needle uh, quite a bit more um, uh, in terms of you know, how, how you can influence the numbers. And we've seen it in real life recently. So uh, we have done an optimization very much like this for a food and beverage company uh, that I've talked about uh, with uh, 700,000 plus nodes uh, of traveling salesman problem that they had to uh, deal with. And it's the same problem that we've had uh, that we've learned about in this COVID thing with distributing uh, vaccines or medicine. Um, you end up without uh, doing correct optimization. You end up with inefficient route planning, inefficient demand planning, fuel costs, and, and unnecessary carbon footprint. You can't really leverage your IoT data because the problem's too big. And, and you want to be able to leverage uh, your point of sale data, or in this case, you know, your, your data about inventory and maybe even temperature data uh, from refrigerators in the case of these vaccines. Um, to do this, uh, uh, it is a huge optimization problem, uh, and quantum computers can help today to solve this kind of a thing, and we've already shown uh, value with our workflows uh, to uh, address these kinds of problems that are real problems and that can actually be solved a bit with today's techniques. But the way you solve this is not just using quantum hardware or even quantum-inspired algorithms. The quantum piece of the problem actually is the smaller piece of the problem. It does a great job mathematically, but you still don't get rid, rid of the uh, problems with data cleaning and data accuracy and, and getting rid of dual records and, and, and moving data from here to there to compute it. All of this classical infrastructure still has to happen. So you can't just ignore the classical part of uh, data analytics because you're using quantum. So just concentrating on your quantum algorithm and how that's going to speed up a computational thing uh, doesn't really help if you don't take care of all of the other classical pre and post processing, boring stuff that you need to actually make a solution work. And we really need to start thinking about building these solutions with quantum and classical approaches in mind, otherwise it will not work in production. We've learned this in AI and machine learning. If you don't think about the classical piece, when you try to scale this up into production and use that little pink box on the bottom, that's your quantum hardware, all the classical stuff can make all the advantages of that uh, pink uh, box go away if you have a crappy ETL process. Um, so what, what quantum giveth, classical might taketh away if we're not thinking about building the entire solution. And you have to start thinking about that now with the right infrastructure and with the right uh, level of thinking. But the good news is that we can use relatively small quantum devices to get a quantum enhancement today in these kinds of problems. Um, here's an example of uh, where we, uh, uh, that we published recently on the archive uh, with uh, uh, a trading example, but it could be optimization of any portfolio or any risk situation. Here we fixed the return for the S&P uh, 500 and, and then looked for portfolios of stocks that would give us the lowest risk within that constraint. And we were able to use a relatively 
uh, small device or even classical hardware uh, simulating a quantum device to give us an actual quantum-based enhancement. And what we're doing here is we're using classical machine learning techniques, classical optimization techniques with a tiny, if you will, uh, quantum enhancement to basically spy on the output of that classical optimizer and figure out its distribution, the probability distribution of its outputs, and use those to, if you will, deep fake better solutions. And we are able to consistently come up with better solutions than your best classical optimizers that are out there. So you can take your best classical algorithms, add a bit of quantum enhancement because of the wonders of uh, superposition and entanglement and the probability distributions that, that that allows us to achieve, um, and, and use that to enhance your algorithms that you have today. And we can give that impact even on classical hardware today uh, and smaller quantum devices uh, today. So we're about building quantum solutions with classical quantum approaches that can take advantage of your best classical approaches that you're using today, add an enhanced optimization technique to kind of turbo boost uh, the poor performance of your existing algorithms and optimizers and not replace them and not replace your workflow and not replace all those nice ETL jobs and infrastructure that you have to do uh, to get the right answer. Um, so using your existing classical optimization, adding this quantum enhance enhancement uh, really is the key to getting a near-term quantum advantage, we believe. And we've created a platform orchestra that allows us to take advantage of classical architectures, classical techniques for data cleaning, ETL, and all of that wonderful stuff to build and deploy at scale uh, these kinds of quantum classical techniques in production. Um, and we can use this so that you have your uh, infrastructure and your problem formation already ready to go. When that magical computer does show up in your data center, it really is a couple of lines of code to change out the back end. When you have 50 qubits, then you have 100 qubits, and then you have 200 qubits so that you can grow. Um, so uh, three actions to take today. Choose a near-term problem. Um, likely, it will be in machine learning or optimization or combination of those techniques. Build a quantum classical solution um, that is ready for enterprise scale deployment. Work on it so that it will actually get to deployment and it won't be just a research project uh, that, that shows that you can check a box that you've played with a, a quantum device. Um, and get it into production now, even if it requires classical infrastructure with a new uh, quantum uh, enhanced uh, uh, structure on the algorithm. And then you will be ready to swap in hardware later as it does become available. And this gets you quantum ready uh, on the nearer term uh, so that you're not surprised when that machine actually does show up uh, and, and those capabilities start to exponentially um, grow. Uh, become the first mover and don't let your competitors actually get there before you do.